Hi everyone, I'm Greg from Pilot Institute. We train drone pilots all over the country. Hi, my name is Haya from Drone XL, where we cover all the drone news on our website. Welcome to the latest episode of the Pixel Drone Show, our weekly podcast where we talk to industry professionals about what they do in the UAS space. From professionals who use drone to fly inspection missions to public safety users or even drone light shows, you will learn on the Pixel Drone Show that drones are much more than just toys. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pixel Drone Show. It's been a while, uh, but we're back. Greg is here and today we have a special guest, uh, Randall Warnes. Uh, he's been a little bit offline for a while as well, but he is back with some very interesting news. Uh, maybe if you remember about three weeks ago, we came across uh, some DJI drone clones. Uh, we saw the Cogito Specta Air, which is basically a DJI uh, Air 3 drone. And then in that same article, we also saw photos of a green DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise drone. And pretty soon thereafter, we found a LinkedIn post from uh, from Randall uh, with the same green color. And we kind of started to connect all the dots in the background. So, uh, Randall, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you here. And hopefully you can uh, lift the view on, uh, on what's going on here. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you again uh, for having me a part of your show. I know that you guys have been uh, away from it for a little bit. So if this is the coming back uh, episode, I am honored and grateful to be a part of it. Uh, I think that you you both know your place in the space, but being able to educate is so hard in the drone space, being able to attract an audience and provide them with consistent uh, information and, and, you know, updates on where the, the industry is. And you guys are two of the best to do it. So uh, I want to say thank you for, on behalf of the industry that we all love, uh, thank you for putting in the time and the grind. And sometimes it's thankless. So let me say thank you before we even get started. You see, awesome. I like, feel a little bit... Uh, butt kissing before we get to the <laughs> we'll, we'll start we'll start with some easy questions and warm you up <laughs> yeah the questions are written already yeah. so it's too late <laughs> yeah as far as the veil goes uh you know today being uh launch day for m2 robotics as a company as well as two products the raptor and raptor t um i think that the leaking of uh, of fcc documentation you know, almost helped the, the story a bit because it kind of showed where we're starting as a base with this technology. We're taking world leading drone technology hardware on the hardware side, and then we've taken significant steps to alleviate some of the concerns behind cybersecurity and country of origin. So we manufacture these drones in Malaysia using almost an entirely uh, non-Chinese sourced uh, supply chain. And then when we take the hardware into the US, we put our own software on it, which is through Aloft, formerly Kitty Hawk, which is ISO 27001 certified, as well as SOC 2 Type 2 certified. They're FAA audited. So basically, I figure, you know, if if the security of their data was good enough before ANZU, then it should be good with ANZU. And so all of our stuff is, is kept and processed on uh, Aloft servers through Aloft software, which is US-based. It's a US-owned company, uh, ANZU Robotics is. So we kind of, again, alleviated some of the stressors behind really good technology, kept it affordable. Uh, and so far, I think we've, we've checked off the boxes we've set out to do. But I'm, I'm going to stop you here for a second because you're running through our entire list of questions in, uh, in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> l l let's go back a little bit. You were the former uh, CEO of uh, Autel Robotics USA, and that didn't work out. Now, we, we spoke about that in the past, so we don't need to go back there. But then for a while, there was uh, was a bit of a radio silence, I think. And yeah. then now we're starting with uh, or you're starting with Enzo. Can you just uh, bring us up to speed? Uh, a little bit with what happened and, and where did this idea originate from to yeah, sure. come up um, with Anzu? So on June 17th will be my 10th year in the drone space. Uh, and I think that it's important to know that, you know, from the beginning, uh, I was the first drone uh, brick and mortar drone reseller in the world. We started Drones Plus back in June of 2014 in Las Vegas, Nevada, had a storefront, had people coming from all over the world coming to see what drones were like firsthand. Uh, yeah. right? so had a relationship uh, with DJI then, uh, left Drones Plus, went and started DJI Enterprise at DJI, was there for a year and a half or so, um, and then went to FLIR for four and a half years, ran their global stuff, was still a partner with uh, DJI on the Zenmuse XT and XT2 series uh, products, um, evangelizing aerial thermal imaging and, and all of that. Had the opportunity to go and be the CEO of Autel Robotics. And I think that what the dream was there is if you give me really good technology, really, really good drone technology, I've 
cemented myself into this you know commercial space by starting DJI Enterprise by being a reseller and setting up the reseller network for commercial drones. That there's just a a DNA or um, an identity for a drone company that would benefit from some of these things that I've seen and some of the the you know privileged places I've been at some of the largest manufacturers in, in drone technology. And like you said, you, you've talked about the Autel stuff before. It's not really a secret. It just, it didn't work out. I felt yeah. you know, at the end of the day, I felt like it's a, a little bit puppeteering of, you know, a, an American guy to, to sell uh, Chinese drones. And, and I had to adhere to a culture and a uh, business business practices that just were not in line with who I was, especially being a CEO. You feel like you should have more control of the DNA of that company. So since then, I've had a painful three years, to be honest. It's just finding home in a in an industry that's so small, um, mm-hmm. where you I've been a part of big players, and then it's like, well, there's smaller players. There's people doing niche uh, markets. You know, I was a part of drone delivery most recently, and it's like that that market's so hard to grow into with legisl- this legislative landscape. Also, you're you know wondering if uh, if you're you're solving a problem or if it's just redundant um so what i was saying all that background for is that i have always erred on the side of country of origin is the wrong way to focus on whether drones should or shouldn't be used it should be truly a, a articulated uh list or um set of practices uh, for cybersecurity. And if you meet, meet those, then it's not about data security at the very least, if we're just talking about data security, just say what that rule is for everyone. And if you can meet those rules, as long as you are not precluded uh, from doing business in the United States or in certain countries, then don't preclude that company from doing that business because the cybersecurity stuff is off base. So because I've always felt that, and because I've had relationships with, you know, the reseller network, the software developers and the OEM of drone technology, I think that I am not singularly unique, but I'm in a unique position to be in a, in this position, right? Which is what we're trying to do at Ansu. Um, I am living out truly a dream in the drone space, which is taking mature, reliable, most highly demanded drone technology, and then decoupling the things that people don't necessarily like or that they're forced upon them and that they you know can't use that technology and it hasn't been an easy road uh but for the last 14 months going on 15 months there has been like okay a precipice of the idea um a negotiation of how that would work finding a software partner to build the develop uh, develop the the software stack on doing all the testing doing all this finding the manufacturing partner uh, in Malaysia where these are being made, sourcing the components with the the help of this Malaysian manufacturer to to help find the individual components that go into this and making it so that those concerns that exist because of the fact that uh, technology is uh, other technologies manufactured in China, that you don't have those, those concerns go away. Um, I can't say that we'll solve this problem or this concern for everyone. It's not a blue product. It's not likely ever going to be a green product. Um, the thermal sensor comes out of China. So NDAA is up in question. Um, so if someone's hearing this and they're like, I'd love to buy that, but it's not blue, you're not going to be buying it. I'm not, it's not going to, that's not the route we're going. It's not meant yeah. for defense, et cetera. But we feel like there is a group of people that are like, I want that drone, the drone I've been flying for years. I want, I want that quality, reliability, millions of them in the air. You pick it up and you're just like, wow. This is light years different than everything else that's on the market. I want that. But boss says no. Company says no. Legislation says no. We want to be like, no, now you can because this is an American-owned company. You can strangle me if I, I mislead uh, you or, or mishandle uh, your data. Um, it, you know, TikTok is going through this thing where it's like if you sell – the company and if it's u.s ownership don't rewrite the code you don't need to change anything it just needs to be on u.s servers well we're doing that plus we're rewriting the code for the for the software so i think we're we're addressing a lot of things and it's it's been a, a journey for sure but we're at a place now where we're launching the company we have product in hand and we'll see uh we'll see where that takes us is that something that you approached dji or dji approached you was that something in your head for a long time that you were trying to uh, to figure out how to do this I, I, so we wanted to find a technology manufacturer 
that could do this, right? And so we license technology from a leading manufacturer in the space. It would be crazy. It would be crazy for any company, especially, you know, small, new founded thing to be like, let me do that. Mm -hmm. So it was more relationships led to conversations, which led to this. Um, it, I wouldn't say it was, it, it was more bi-directional than it was unidirectional. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, you know, a company calling everybody they could think of in the United States and saying, Hey, do you want to, do you want to license our technology? Mm -hmm. I think it was a pretty targeted thing. Um, and to be transparent, I've been a part of a very, very similar conversation with a previous employer to do a similar thing and it just didn't work out. But me being in those boardrooms, having those conversations, I think there was a lot of comfort in like, there was a lot of ideas. We did kind of go through what would need to be done and that was stored in my brain. Um, so I think there was some natural magnetism to do this relationship, but um, yeah, I, it's not like I would have been, I wouldn't have had the courage to have that conversation because I would have assumed it would have been heck no. But, you know, the, mm -hmm. the current geospatial or not geospatial, geopolitical landscape has pushed weird solutions to weird problems yep. that probably shouldn't exist. That's what I figured. Yeah. yeah. So, so how does that work um, with Anzu and DJI? Like what kind of a arrangement have you guys set up and how is this going to go uh, work going forward uh, in your relationship with them? So what I'll say about our licensing agreement from the technology supplier is that we arranged a, 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 tech, a technology transfer or licensing agreement in which we were basically given the technology, uh, the hardware specs and, and how to, to make that thing um, for a period of time, uh, multiple years of, of time exclusivity for this and we chose uh, two products, a non-thermal and a thermal foldable small uh, footprint SRR type drone uh, to do to start with. Um, it could be that we expand to other drones, but making payloads mm -hmm. and larger size and smaller market, it's just that's a, a lot to bite off it at first. So we did that technology transfer through an agreement. Um, we have exclusivity and we have a, a period of time. That technology is now ours to, to do what we want with it. So if we modified it, if we changed from green to blue to whatever, that's our choice. If we uh, put different, you know, if we were capable engineering wise of putting different payloads, we could do whatever. It, it is an Anzu Robotics product through and through. It's just leveraging lots of years of really good engineering work and, and innovation, uh, which I feel super fortunate uh, for. And then all the software stuff, obviously we have full control of. Basically, what we got during that tech transfer is a snapshot in time of firmware um, that, you know, is it can't be changed. It can't be modified. It's like, here's the stack to work from and then build up from that and then package it so that uh, all the security is there, um, which requires, you know, us to do third party penetration testing, all that stuff to make sure that there's nothing left behind that could uh, cause uh, concerns. But yeah, the relationship, it's not, there's no royalty sharing, there's no reporting, there's no, here's, you know, what, what, who we're selling to any of that stuff. This is our company. It's just, we license technology at some point with a manufacturer that, that knew how to make it really well. So you could make a, a blue and pink pilot institute version is what you're saying. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> could do. I, I think that if you find good enough justification, I'll, I'll have that call, Greg. <laughs> we can have that conversation at some point. Um, what, uh, are you, so are you planning to sell mostly in the U.S. market at the moment or are you just going uh, global? So when we say at the moment, at the moment for sure, because what we got is an initial stock, uh, initial um, batch of units and, you know, initial batches, you shouldn't go to the moon because you should look at them and make sure that everything is good and that it came out as it's expected. Yep. Um, so our first batch of units landed yesterday. Um, and we, uh, because we were waiting for production units, we're sending them out to the third party penetration testing facility. They said it's going to be two to three weeks to get that done. So end users probably won't see these for two to three weeks because we want to make sure there is nothing that we have to address before they go out. We feel pretty good about that. Working with Aloft, we, we trust in, in their processes, but we want to validate that. Um, but we're also working heavily through the reseller network. So they may have them in their hands and be able to do testing and things like that, but we're not going to 
um, put them out in the world just to have like a weird, awkward recall or something because we aren't sta- uh, living up to what we expect or what we said. Yep. Um, so w- you were asking about U- the U.S. U.S. and Canada will be initially. Um, we're not going to keep them out of Canada. So if Canadian users want to use them, no problem. We did go through the process of getting these certified in CE and other leading uh radio certifications so that we could sell them into Europe and other places uh, whenever we feel ready for that um, according to stock and then making some changes on like charging and, and stuff like that, getting the right cables in there. But yeah, so the goal is be an international drone supplier, but today we are North American. Yeah. Drone Walk supplier. before you run. Yeah. And you know, we feel like, the U.S. has particular sensitivities to all of this, and mm-hmm. if we can if we could satisfy those particularities in the U.S., then we could probably satisfy them elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's also part of it. Is this this whole story is not is the technology good enough? I dare someone to say that it's not good enough. Hardware yeah. wise, I dare them. It's the best technology in the world. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. really much different. On the software side, Aloft has done a great job at adding. Things on top of it for compliance, Lance authorizations, uh, you know, uh, live streaming, things that make the product that much more capable. But the user experience is going to be what you expect. It's going to be very familiar. It's not going to be missing much, if if anything. So it's this isn't a conversation about really like, did you make a good thing? We made a really good mm-hmm. thing. And I, that's not a pat on my back. That's someone else gets to claim that. But what we did is a really challenging thing. And what I'm trying to do is do a, a, a difficult thing, which is educating the market that this is different, that you can trust this. And how many layers of, of affirmation that you can trust it is it going to take before people are going to go, oh, okay, like this is not, this is not that. This is, this is a different thing, a different entity, a standalone entity that I can work with long term without worrying about the geopolitics of tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have a Anzu Robotics Raptor and a Raptor T um, based off the DJI Mavic 3 drone, basically. Which markets are you going to go after? Like, where do you see the use cases uh, for these drones initially? Well, um, because, because we would say, is it blue? No. Is it green? No. NDA compliance questionable. We'd have to, we'll have to see where that goes, but it's not really a, mm-hmm. a goal. The The customer is going to be, well, who who wants to spend more than what they would spend for a Chinese manufactured product. That's green. Who wants to spend? It's not much more. I mean, I think we kept things affordable just to say price. It's it's fifty one hundred dollars for the Raptor and, and seventy six hundred dollars for the Raptor T. Still significantly less expensive than competitive same sized airframes that are built domestically. Um, so I think we've done a good thing at keeping affordability on that front. Um, but no one's going to spend more if they don't have to. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're trying to address the markets that have to, that's going to be enterprises, large companies that have concerns about, you know, optics or, um, have legal departments that are concerned or are in states that are, are pushing legislation or at least threatening legislation, obviously public safety, those that are using government funds. If they're like, look, we have a whole fleet of what we used to use. Retraining sounds dumb. We could just move over to this thing that is familiar, but you know, we don't have those same problems. That's the target. So it's likely going to be industrial users, uh, construction companies, survey mapping, um, uh, utilities, solar inspection is very easily done through this, but I don't think they, they're really that concerned about country of origin, um, unless they're big firms and then public safety, I would say, but not defense. And if consumers want to buy these, have at it. You'll have a really, uh, a really expensive version of of <laughs> of a drone that you probably don't need most of the features. But yeah. So the the folks that the, the folks we hear a lot about is the folks in Florida that are public safety uh, because of yeah. the regulations. So this would actually work for them, right? So what I know about that is a previous uh, endeavor and just me being respectful. I'm not going to say what that previous endeavor is, but I, we, I went through this hybrid process very recently where it's taking a drone. That's not, not Chinese, but it's also not blue. It's not us made. It's, it's something else and was successful in getting those into Florida public safety. Um, we have written out a pretty comprehensive cybersecurity disclosure saying, this is what it is. This is what we we've done, you know, signed by me stamped with the, the, the company name, and that was 
part of the secret to getting that stuff uh, through in Florida. I mean, it's not on the blue list. And at first they were like, it needs to be blue. And then you would ask yourself, why in the world would you want a drone that was made in 2018, pre-COVID, that was stamped with blue to be part of your uh, 2024 fleet, or at least that's what you're purchasing today. Like blue is very complicated Mm -hmm. and was meant for defense. It was meant for a specific SRR program from DIU, not meant for cops that are looking for uh, missing kids, you know, or firefighters and yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you guys know this, but I'm saying it because it's it's the way that we think about this. Um, I'm hoping that the Florida public safety and Arkansas public safety, Mississippi, Mississippi public safety, and any of those or those, uh, uh, states that are having legislation that are saying, well, we don't want Chinese made drones that they're like, this is not a Chinese made drone. This maybe was developed by a guy in China, the, the techno the R and D was done, but this is normal. This is normal business behavior. Te- Technology is licensed all the time. Mm-hmm. You think that, well, maybe Roomba's a bad example, but you think that you have like little robots in your, your house doing things, you know, around uh, a lot of things are licensed and um, China is not, a China is not my enemy. I'll say that first and foremost, like, uh, but it's not about me. China uh, is developing really great technology. They have a lot of resources and a lot of smart people coming out of technology uh, minded institutions cost of labor is less so they could get a lot of them. They all try to solve these problems. If we're not leveraging that as currently friendly, not at war countries, I think that that's, that's a miss. Um, So my question, I I asked a friend recently, me doing this, Andrew Robotics, putting this out, is this helping the domestic capability of drone manufacturing? That's a question, right? Like people are saying, we need to improve the U.S., capabilities, domestic capabilities of drones. Is this doing that? It's a U.S. company, U.S. owned technology for a period of time. I can move manufacturing to Mexico. I can move it to the United States mm-hmm. to pay more, but I can move it. That I'm not kept from doing that. I would say, yeah, it is. And it's going to continue to grow programs, not shrink them, mm-hmm. not go from 10 drones to two because now you don't have budget for that anymore. It's going to, I think, benefit not only the use uses and the uh, softwares that add on to what drones can do, but it's also going to just overall make it so that we're internalizing as a drone manufacturer, how this stuff is done um, and creating inroads for future products that might have nothing to do with licensing technology mm-hmm. as well. So, so we- the, the drone looks familiar, feels familiar. The remote controller, I'm assuming, same deal. You have a snapshot in time from the firmware. Uh, so you, that's what you work off from. Um, it's going to fly and, and controlling the drone feel familiar to people as well. Is it going to be anything similar to the software they've used in the past? Is the drone going to have the same features? Uh, will it have the same restrictions in terms of geofencing or like where, where? Yeah. I love your question. And and it's not these, none of this was like easy softball stuff. But first of all, geofencing, mm-hmm. no geofencing. No we, geofencing. We and, That's, uh... <laughs> and Aloft both feel like, you know, it's it's in the hands of the pilot to be compliant. Now, Anzu, yeah. or not Anzu, Aloft is very big into helping with compliance there. 80% of all lands authorizations are done through uh, the Aloft platform. Um, there's pre-flight, post-flight checklists. They go through all sorts of safety stuff and compliance stuff. You can look at your airspace. You can look at weather. It's much more than any. It's much more than leading manufacturers are putting out there to try to encourage compliance. But geofencing has been a thing where it's it's a key selling point to not have geofences. We don't have geofences, you know, partially, be, largely because we just don't believe that we should be restricting that. A cop needs to fly at uh, Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. I'm not shutting that down. Like I'm not asking for a phone call to be like, oh, okay, yeah. you're authorized to do it. You determine if you're authorized to do it. That shouldn't be in our hands. But I think that that is a huge uh, improvement because uh, from other leading technology mm-hmm. because that process is painful. Um, but as far as the software familiarity, when you first pull up the Aloft uh, Air Control app, which is what flies this uh, uh, most out of the box, um, is... First, you could choose to register or not. You could not register. Obviously, warranty issues arise because of that. But when you do register with warranty, it just says serial number and a date that it was registered. We don't 
adhere, adhere your personal information to that, but you could choose to not to not to do that. And you could just say fly, you're fine. But if you are registered, you have pre-flight checklists that are customizable and things like that, that will look new because that's all a loft on top of it. But once you say, okay, I've done all that, go fly that, uh, you know, telemetry flight experience with the FPV in the middle and the menus are all going to feel very familiar. It's not one for one familiar, but it's going to be, it's going to be as if you were flying something you've flown before. Um, the thing that I will admit is missing is, um, uh, advanced mission planning. So if you want to do zigzag pattern capture for photogrammetry today on April 17th, doesn't, it's not there yet. It is being done. I can say, and being like stupid, naive CEO of a company, it's supposed to be done in June. So we're not, we're saying end of Q2. Now every manufacturer throws out end of start of whatever and misses. End of, uh, in June is when we anticipate this to be done. You will then have mission planning. If it slips and if it's July, I deserve to be told that you missed and slid and we expected this sooner. I, that's, I understand that. So not an Elon We're Musk also, promise. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're also, um, we we'll are, have Randall back on the show July 1st. <laughs> exactly. Now no, still no mission planning. Uh, we, it, it's all, it's being done through a lot. We've, we've uh, scoped out the work it, it shouldn't yeah. be a problem but when you go there and you're like i want to fly a zigzag pattern to do an easy photogrammetry thing it's missing right now because that's not something that was alley-ooped to us through this licensing agreement it's something we had to do on our own um we're also working with one of the leading uh drone software photogrammetry companies to do their work so that you could fly their free app and capture that stuff it might still come after hours but it'd be much more much more comprehensive um, so we're getting there. So I, this is in full transparency. You'll love every aspect of this. You'll say, this is super quality, feels great. Flying's easy, flies stable. It's incredible, but you'll say, where's that thing where I want to fly these missions? It, it's not there. And it, for out the gate, it might keep people from being uh, able to replace anything they're doing because they're doing zigzag patterns all day long, doing different inspections. So you'll have an SDK available for third-party software. If people are using that already, then they'll be able to switch over to that or keep using that. Yeah, I mean, we it's part of this whole licensing thing is that we, we have the ability to build more onto it. I think that um, we, one, want to walk before we run. We want to see the experience of another partner using that and, and how that all works. Mm -hmm as well as we want to make sure that having something else developed outside of the Aloft platform doesn't create new vulnerabilities, doesn't create, you know, anything that needs to be continually penetration tested or validated again. Um, so we're starting with, with one. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I want to serve all the markets that are using this stuff and soft. One of the saddest stories about our industry is how many jobs are at risk if DJI were to disappear. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, we lose all those software engineers to Amazon and Google and, you know, other industries, uh, other hardware industries, because we can't keep them all. If there's not an addressable market of millions of dr drones or hundreds of thousands of drones, uh, or tens of thousands of industrial drones, when you shrink that market, it's like so many of our friends and colleagues disappear. So many of the drone trade shows are like, now it truly is only startups because you can't have large, there's no large companies anymore that could, especially that could afford that sort of thing. So DJI is so important to okay. our industry period. And that's not, has nothing to do with what I'm doing. This is just me getting on that soapbox. If we've forgotten where we came from, this whole thing, this podcast, my career, my kids being, having the lives that they have only happened because DJI happened. Mm -hmm. Not only because I was an employee of them, yeah. but because they were the gateway drug to all this stuff. Yep. And if this all originated in the United States, it would be as big as like oh, yeah. RC cars after 40 years, right? It's like this drones have solved so many problems and it all was precipiced by one organization. And the amount of flack that they get is, in my opinion, undue. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I I agree. I don't think politicians have a good idea of the amount of jobs that you would lose, but also the amount of uh, lives that you wouldn't be able to right. save for first responders that you cannot keep safe if you didn't have DJI drones. So right. um, every time I hear anything about a, a possible DJI ban, it's like my hands start itching. It's like, <laughs> it would not be a good thing for sure. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to ask you, because we haven't touched on this yet, uh, we did do the geofencing, but uh, another fun aspect in uh, in our drone life is uh, called remote ID. Are your mm-hmm. drones going to be remote ID compliant? All remote ID ready day one. It's, yeah. Awesome. That, that will not keep anyone. You don't need a separate module. You don't need to do anything. It's all it's all ready to go. In, Perfect. Any... Um... Any <laughs> hidden fees uh, of monthly monthly subscription fees to be able to fly these ah, drones or access any so features? It's, it's a question. It's a good question. One thing I'll say is that when you we talked, I mentioned the pricing earlier. One thing that's built into that is a year of of Anzu Care, which is the you know accidental collision replacement repair service that's included. We built that into pricing so that it's not a question of whether someone does or doesn't want it or has it or doesn't have it. Everyone in their first year is going to have that protection for the product so that's a hidden fee in the price i guess because of course it's folded in there somewhere somehow but um it's what you expect to pay when we're talking about you bought an anzu uh, raptor raptor t now is there anything more you could pay yes you could get the enterprise version of aloft which allows you to do a lot of you know other things like live streaming is a is a, a enterprise feature um you know it's not an astronomical price and it's not necessary, mm-hmm. but if you're a public safety agency and you want to be able to live stream and have, um, you know, all of your, your part 107 licenses registered onto it and have all your flight logs in one place. Fleet management. And share it, and, yep. that, uh, yeah. Fleet management, all that stuff. Yeah. I think, and I'm not aloft, and this is an aloft thing, but I think it's like $40 a month for an organization or something like that. So $400 a year. That has nothing to do with you operating, capturing imagery, uh, doing, you know, some of the, the basic stuff that is just normal for flight. But if you want other things, I don't even think that that's an Anzu proposition. It's just a loft is partnered with us. So you could go that route, but it, it's, uh, there's no hidden fees. It's not a software subscription. This isn't a SaaS model whatsoever. This is buy your drone and go capture your data as you wish. That, that's good. Uh, I do have a follow up on on you mentioned customer service and repairs. Yeah. Uh, we know how difficult customer service can be and how it can make or break a company. How do you plan to handle uh, customer service and repair? I think these are two different things. But are you going to do repairs in the US? Are you going to send it back to Malaysia? How's that going to work? All the repairs are going to be done in the U.S. Um, out the gate, we've partnered. Uh, so I was a drone reseller. I started the DJI Enterprise Network. I've believed in drone rese- the reseller network since forever. I stay close with those guys. It's it's would not be – I would not run a drone company without having the drone reseller network as part of that. So with that said, um, our drones are going – I've had a lot of help. Anzu Robotics is not a big company. It's really mighty technology, very lean company so that we could get stock and do the things that are are necessary to keep this thing running. Um, But uh, so marketing, we have a a agency that helps us. We have a 3PL, we have a um, manufacturing contract manufacturer. So there's not like a lot of stuff on our overhead, but in doing so, we're working with two distributors, uh, Exertus Almo and Drone Nerds to do master distribution. And um, so they're they're going to be part of the repair process. And then we also are gonna have resellers uh, that are across the country to do you know smaller service type things. But currently, um, you know, they, they stay in the United States, they get repaired here. We tend, we, we intend to uphold the same service expectations that you would have of any manufacturer. Um, but yeah, uh, you'll just have to trust me on it until one person puts it to the, to the test. So if you want to buy a dream, green drone today and go mess it up and then send it to me, you could figure out uh, for the first time how long it takes to get those repaired. An actual uh, green drone. I, uh, I'm sure you a... Uh... <laughs> AUVSI is going gonna, is gonna to have fun with this one. Um, <laughs> well, this I one's wondering, something, like... So. like <laughs> This one actually flies. Yes, this one has wings. <laughs> um, 
The whole Enzu robotic story makes a lot of sense for the end user, right? Police departments in Florida or throughout the country, it makes sense for you. It makes sense for drone nerds. How does this make sense for DJI? Like what's in it for them? I mean, you, you paid them a licensing fee. Great. I'm sure yeah. they had a ton of money already. Like why, why is DJI doing this? Why doesn't DJI start DJI USA and they run this on their own? And uh, Well, okay. That the second question, I've been a part of something very similar to that and it didn't work. It does not make you not Chinese. If the phone calls you take every week are with China telling you how, how to conduct that business. Right. Okay. Um, what's in it for them? I, I can't say that I'm in the, the heads and minds of, of everybody at DJI. What I can say is that Frank Wong is a business person. He's a technologist and he's a business person. His aspirations were uh, influenced and, and his, his, yeah, his, his inspiration is Steve Jobs, not, uh, you know, he, he values from what I understand the doing good business and being competitive in a business space. I'm not reading minds or tea, uh, tea leaves. I'm just thinking if it's me, why would I do this? This is not a money-making endeavor for uh, anyone that's licensing us technology uh, for, for their hardware manufacturing. There's no profit sharing. They don't know how many we've sold. They don't get to determine when we buy more. There's no data information about customers being transferred. So it's like, why would you do that? I would assume it's a competitive thing first of, first and foremost and this is me speaking quite bluntly and maybe out in a place that not a lot of people would go but that the lobbying in the united states specifically has gotten out of hand in my opinion and when it comes to drones and it's ill-informed and it's it's solely self self-serving yep. it's it's painting mm -hmm. this fear-mongering stuff uh for yep. chinese manufactured drones which i think is wrong uh, it's saying that the these drones are doing things they're not doing it's painting the Worst case scenario of you're flying over a, a nuclear power plant doing inspections and they have the geo reference of that. They stole that data and now they know where that thing is that otherwise they couldn't find on a Google map, right? Like the, it's all painted in nonsense. So I think that because that lobbying uh, thing went too far, what we got is a very large manufacturer that's like, well, we really want to be a part of that market. We don't want to lose our foothold. Maybe, maybe legislation changes, but for the meantime, we, we want to, you know, we want to keep, keep this all alive and continue growing the pie, making accessibility for affordable quality drones uh, as possible. And maybe it does hurt some competition, uh, you know, that mm. is putting out higher priced drones because people don't have other options. That would be my thinking yep. because for, for uh, a couple a couple million dollars is not changing the lives of, yeah. of anyone that's manufacturing drones in, in China, yeah. right? Um, yeah. And so it's not that. Yeah, but it's either they get zero dollars um, or they get something from this agreement, right? So I, I think to them, the bottom line is either we're going to get zero dollars because we have all this lobbying and, and all these yeah. rules, or we can still, like you said, have a, a strong foothold and and still have a drone that people know is based on a DJI drone, and yeah, I, I think that you yeah, get yeah. it right. Oh, it's a it's a smart move, I think, from DJI in terms of fighting the competition, right? I mean, if they can't fight under the DJI umbrella, but they can indirectly fight under the Anzu umbrella. Well, and to be clear, and this is something really important for people to understand, is this is Anzu fighting for Anzu, right? Like this mm -hmm. is this is an opportunity that I have with you know, the company that, that has been built to um, test this market and learn what we don't know and, and solve that question of what if this happened? What if we didn't have these pain points and we could just continue to use this technology? You pay a little more. It's not, it's not consequential, really. Um, so I think that the second part is educational. How, how not Chinese does a Chinese company need to be to not be Chinese in our eyes when it comes to legislation? And it could be the blueprint for lots of things uh, being transferred from uh, that country to be continue to have a market in the United States. Does it require uh, a U.S. born citizen that has no ties, you know, financially or otherwise to uh, China or the, the initial manufacturer for it to be valid? Maybe. But let's say that we find out that, yeah, they, they could. I mean, the 
there could just be a a, a USA offshoot that has you know uh, is public is listed on the Nasdaq. You have someone to strangle if something goes wrong. You have a, a CEO to put in prison if something goes wrong, uh, and that's good enough. Then maybe what the licensor of this technology learns is that we could do this long term and find a way around this. But this is a, a very clean way for this uh, educational process to happen while being able to make you know a competitive product in this space. I, I think that yeah. So you ask what's what's in it for the licensing organization? It's it's find out what you don't know um, mostly. Then my follow-up question for you is like the the um, the market opportunity, if you will, um, is is there right now? But it's also it's it's there within a very specific and unique set of circumstances, right? With the political mm -hmm. political climate, um, how vulnerable is Anzu Robotics to any changes in that political climate? Or if let's say DJI comes out with a DJI Mavic 4 enterprise that is a better drone and they're still able to sell in the United States, like how yeah. how much of a niche market are you in and how vulnerable are you to, to those external changes? I first of all love this question and I love those conjunction, uh, the conjunction of questions. Um, if there's newer technology than what we're building now, I feel like the, the rapid iteration of technology in the drone space is at its detriment. I think that you don't need to put in a new, oh, it's 48 megapixels now, it's 60 megapixels tomorrow. Like that doesn't change much. I think we, we've we hit a point of like the technology is pretty good. Uh, 45 minutes flight time is great. If you need an hour, like I don't know what you're going to do with, with your chiropractor bill because you're going to be staring up uh, in, the, in space for an hour straight. Like I feel like, I'm not so worried about next generation stuff. I've said since being CEO of Autel, one thing I wanted to do is make it so that we slowed down that pace and that you can get batteries from the thing you bought four years ago. You could get those today and you could still be flying and it still has value within your fleet rather than forcing this iteration. Mm -hmm. So a new drone comes out with better sensors or whatever, I'd say, well, it's still pretty damn good for what the, you're paying for. And if, I mean, at the first place, if you can buy a Chinese made drone, specifically, if you could buy a DJI drone, continue doing that. If you are not faced with geopolitical cons concerns from your organization, or you don't feel like your state's going to ban anything, keep doing it because it is the best technology and you're paying less. It's not green and you don't get it. You don't get to have me as your, your guy. But other than that, it's the best stuff there is. Right. So I would, anyone would, there's no reason someone would switch from that if they didn't need to. Um, but because this is building a long-term um, uh, relationship that we can work off of, the only mm -hmm. thing that would cause a major issue for Enzo Robotics is that all bans, all threats of bans are lifts, all uh, geopolitical concerns are yeah. lift, lifted. Um, is that going to happen in the next four, six, ten years? No, it's not. There's going to be maybe even heightened concern and more legislation. So I don't my get my bets are placed on the table to do this whole project spend the amount of time that has been spent to do it and the money that has been invested to do it the gamble is that it's not going to get better might get worse might stay the same if let's just say it's status quo the people that are saying i really 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 liked using that stuff but i can't use it anymore mm -hmm. so i need to find something else we are the logical option for that class yeah. of drone and so the, that's not our Another follow-up question for you then. Um, yeah. If I'm a police department in Florida and I have 15 DJI Mavic 3 Enterprises, can I convert them to become Anzu uh, drones? Is there a way to make them not Chinese and and still use the same batteries, use the same controllers, no. use the same drones, but get rid of the China part? So, I mean, Enzo Robotics is a manufacturer of drones. Uh, and so it's our we have our own product. We have our own thing going on. It's not... Uh, the relationship has stopped with the transfer. The relationship hasn't stopped as I know people that work there, but the relationship isn't ongoing. There isn't like a collaboration mm -hmm. to make this happen. Enzo Robotics is a manufacturer standalone. And so if you have a manu a another drone that's Chinese, that's it's going to stay that way forever. Could there be a concept of like, how can we repurpose these, refashion these, put this on the same software stack, secure it, change it, and then it wouldn't be, it would still like, It'd be, it wouldn't be an Anzu product, but it could be a, 
filtered product to make something good enough or set a, a bit of certain standard, that could be part of a, a scope in the future. I don't think that would be not, it wouldn't be unsmart, but it, it would just be weird because we are yeah. our own thing. Right. Um, so I, what I would say is that if you had stuff componentry that seems similar there might be salvaging some of it, and I can't say I know oh. or have tested it, but some things might still be compatible. So you wouldn't need to like throw out everything that part of the infrastructure of the drone. Um, no. But the drone itself, like it, that's there's nothing to be saved with that. A buyback program could happen. I don't know how that would work. I don't really want to go down that road, mm-hmm. but buyback program could work um, to to alleviate some of the problems. And it's just like one for one. You've been trained on it. You went to pilot Institute, you know, your, your stuff, uh, how to fly, uh, your drone, uh, but you want to have something familiar that's possible, but other that than will that, be a, a nice government initiative, right? Didn't they do that a couple of years ago where they said trade in your old clunker and get a more fuel efficient car and you get like a government rebate or something. I mean, if you think about all the fire departments, first responders, I mean, drones are not cheap. Uh, Their budgets are limited. They have money invested uh, in drones, in controllers, in the software, in batteries and stuff to just have to write it off or or give it away or sell it or something. It might be nice if they can upgrade to, let's say, an Anzu drone or at least keep using some of that hardware. And I think that that would be an initiative that, I mean, it it sounds not far-fetched, but it sounds like that would be, if I'm in a position where I'm like part of a government program, whether it's the government uh, legislation actively shutting down uh, what we're trying to build because, you know, they, the lobbyists still get through and, and they still don't like it. Or uh, if it's something like this, like I would be thrilled to to be a part of, of making that change. That's, it, was, yeah. it was a sad day when Florida had to shut down all oh, yeah. of their drones. Yep. There were millions of yeah. dollars of taxpayers' money that were spent to protect and serve their communities. And it was just like, no, nah, you can't do it anymore um, because we said so. And there's no real justification. If you ask any of the drone experts in our actual state, they'll say this is stupid. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we just decided this is going to happen. Um, that shouldn't have happened like that. Um, I think even a lot of folks would look back and say, okay, maybe it shouldn't have been like, like that exactly. Um, and so what I'm proposing is that Enzo Robotics is not at threat to ever experience that again. And you're still spending half or a fifth of the price and you're getting drones that you've probably already flown and, and trained on, or at least a very similar experience. Yep. I have a question from a, uh... From uh, I'm a businessman and build this business bootstrapped. Did you do this bootstrap? Did you get VC money? And and you don't have to answer if it's too uh, too personal. No, I, I, there's nothing that I I won't answer that question. The the who is a little uh, complicated because what the opportunity came up is you know it's best that this thing is run by drone people. So there's other people in the drone space that have their own businesses that their livelihoods are attached to that they don't want to be sidetracked with this. They, this is, I'm not a wealthy dude. I've done okay, but I own part of this company. I don't own the majority. I don't even close to own the majority, but I was chosen as the person to run it because I've been a part of manufacturing for a long time because I've been vocal because I've sat on your show before. Like this is not new to me, um, but all the anyone that has any money in, invested in it, uh, I will say it's a total of four people. They are American born citizens. They have no ties to China. It's not like someone's implanted into this. They're people that I consider have considered friends for a long time. They just don't want to be involved or exposed, not exposed. That's the wrong. They just don't want it to be like, oh, you're this as well. Let me just talk to you about this thing. Yep. That's It's for me to run and they continue to run their businesses. Yep. And so they're, they're unimpacted by the gravity of this thing and can continue to grow their own things. Yep. So if that, hopefully that's sufficient for as an answer. No, silent um, investors. There should be no concerns yep. about who these people are. You probably know some of them. You probably shaken their hands. You might even be good friends with some of them. It's just the, the choice was, Randall, you get to run with this thing. And I did not question that for a second. I said, hell yeah, let me just make it what I want to make it. And honestly, it's been so refreshing based off of the pain that I went through mm-hmm. Autel, Autel, where 
the the website when it, you see it uh the the copy that's on there like i either wrote it well i wrote it and then we went through and made sure it's all consistent but i i i put my dna into this so much money is not a concern we've ordered now 1500 units you go write a check for what 1500 units is for a manufacturer plus the the licensing stuff plus the aloft uh, software stuff money is not the issue mm-hmm. um I, it's, you know, the overhead isn't, is not existent. I'm in my office (laughs) in my house. Like, you know, there, there is a a satellite office in case we need to put people, um, in Austin, Texas, where the the headquarters is. But I mean, this, we're trying to do this in the way that you would do this. If this opportunity landed in your lap and you had to sort it all out, we're trying to be the intention of this is a good thing. I think that that's the message that me spending some time with you is that the intention of this is not steal data, hide China, any of that. It's like, Mm -hmm. give people what they want. Give a person that actually has been listening for 10 years to what people say and uh, what what they want in a drone company and try to be that. And I honestly think we are embodying it, but we don't know what's gonna come. Uh, We don't know what challenges we're gonna face with politics. We don't know what challenges we're gonna face with service support, but we know the product's good. We know what the failure rate could likely be, uh, you know, industry leading less than 1%. So, yeah, we feel really positive about what we're starting with, uniquely positive. Um, but I can't say that we don't, we, we know what, you know, tomorrow is going to look like for Enzo. Yeah. Yep. Um, I am going to ask you about that uh, regardless. Uh, you're going to run with this. Um, let's say everything kind of stays the same geopolitical stuff. Uh, there's no Mavic 4 on the horizon. You run with this for the next three, four, five years. Where is Anzu Robotics four or five years from now? Where would you like to be? Uh, are you going to get into consumer drones, new models? Uh, what yeah, is the dream? Um, so a, a consumer drone concept, if someone said you're going to make millions of dollars to do a consumer drone i'd be like look you will then have a warehouse of broken things returned from best buy you will have headaches all over the place i've sold consumer drones since 2014 i mean like i was a part of that back then and it was hard back then when you had the customers that you can number in you know uh, uh, on a on a normal spreadsheet now consumer drones sell in the craziest numbers and i just don't think i would want to be part of that my dna is in the industrial and and civic uses of drones i think that that's where i'd stay um when it comes to what we would develop maybe larger drones with more complex payloads maybe you know multi-spectral stuff lidar stuff the, the things that we all know people also need and maybe are precluded from using because of country of origin so i think we would address that um, then there's also the really interesting thing. Well, there's it's it, ground robots. They're not selling a ton unless you're like the big company selling to defense, defense which this is not the intention, but ground robotics could be interesting. Uh, VTOLs could be interesting. Um, but what I really think we could have just achieved is, is a blueprint on how to take technology, best technology anywhere that's manufactured in the world, manufacture it somewhere else, keeping costs low getting a good uh, stream for for supply chain and then having a front for that. So if it's in the robotic space, whether it's software or hardware, um, I think we could be a home for that. Um, we've, we've certainly been able to step up to this challenge. So we would take on more. Um, I think we'll still be making the initial Raptor and Raptor T's in four years from now um, for, or at least supporting them uh, would be the hope. Uh, but yeah. That that would that's that would be my answer. Is like, I hope that we're standing. I hope we're serving, supporting our customers, and we've transformed some of this dialogue about drones to being like, it's not it's not necessarily about country specific. It's about security of data. So we we've seen recently another company popped up um, with uh, a DJI Air Three equivalent that looks very very similar. No relationship, right? No relationship. Didn't didn't know it existed. Like once the once it leaked, the Kajito stuff leaked. We learned about it. Didn't assumed kind of oh it could be similar. Uh, we have the exclusivity on on the stuff that we have, so we're not worried about like other folks being like oh me too. I'm gonna go put a blue one out and I'll put a pink one out for Pilot Institute. Like we we own this thing. Um, but yeah, uh, we 
we know it happened. It, it honestly, the Kajito, uh, shipping stuff out to a influencer or something to have them tested led to the leak of the sec stuff of Anzu before we were ready. Mm -hmm. We were going to launch on the same date anyway, but it kind of, it forced our forced things to come out. Uh, some of it positive, some of it just, you know, we just have to address it. Um, but yeah, I mean, for Kajito, they should just tighten it up, make sure that they are ready to do this. Because being a drone manufacturer, even if you're alley -oop, the best stuff, it's not easy. Um, I've learned that. And I think, you know, Chris Anderson of 3DR, he exposed the world to when you think you've got it figured out, you it can go bad really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And Chris Anderson is a friend of mine, in some cases, a mentor of mine. Um, and it's not easy. Uh, especially not easy when you have, you know, the, the big behemoths breathing down your neck. I think what we have here is small, like it's not the big behemoth breathing down my neck. It's like whether there's misinformation. And so you guys give me a platform to come out and at least speak my truth and be like shell company. No, um, you know, Chinese puppeteering of a, an American to do their bidding, stealing data. No, like I think I would be in a lot of trouble if I'm doing a global espionage, uh, ring uh in from my basement they know where to find me so it's like just being able to get out some of the things that might be misconceptions or um be able to address them head on i think that, like, i'm really truly grateful for that because i don't think i could write enough copy on our website for people to be like oh i finally get it i kind of see that this guy isn't trying to like ruin ruin my life or you know be a part of world war three mm -hmm. like none of that just trying to serve the yeah. drone industry with good drones um, are you, awesome. Um, go ahead. Uh, go I ahead. just had one more. Um, are you planning to be sending those to, and I'm not saying this for me, but to influencers and people to test them so that uh, you can have reviews and have a buzz going on around this? The most important thing for me right now is the review of cybersecurity experts. Mm -hmm. um, so we're having third party penetration testing done literally uh, starting tomorrow or no, starting today. It will be d day one of that penetration testing. Um, so we want it, we won't ship anything or have any users using it until we know. Um, there's some folks that have been quite critical of both uh, Chinese developed drones as well as, you know, what this company could be that it's like, okay, put one in their hands and say, break it, find it, find the vulnerability. Because if you find it, there is one yep. and there's no denying that we have to fix it. The goal is not to run from it. The goal is not to hide it, but to fix it. And we have the capacity to fix anything um, or, or then admit that we didn't do what we set out to do, yeah. which is why we have third-party penetration testing. I think if we sent them out to people that review products and know what it is, like it's going to fly as good as anything you've ever flown. I'm confident the quality is going to be that. And we're not trying to sell 2 trillion units either. We want to sell to people that get it. And with, with the first batch of units, I think we're, you know, we shouldn't have a, a problem with, with getting that across. So it's kind of a complicated thing because then you, you're just chasing units down and you're like monitoring what's being mm -hmm. said. And it's like, it's not on the hardware. This stuff has been out for two years. Like we know what it is. We know how it works. It's just, uh, you know, it's not even the extra features. It's did, does it do what you say it'll do? Yeah. No geofencing flies really well. Feel familiar user experience. And by June you'll have a uh, advanced mission planning like that's that's what you, anyone would walk away with it's good it, it flies just like it yeah we know that does it so leak data if someone can tell me that yeah then i i like there's opportunities for that yeah so for for all the people who have been listening to this podcast or watching it on youtube like where do people go to to learn more and to maybe try out these drones so first of all, andrewrobotics.com website. If you want to harass me, tell me what you don't like about the color. If you want to tell me what I missed, like uh, educate me because I, I'm an open book. My email, Randall, andrewrobotics.com. I try to be the remote, most responsive guy in the industry. So if you send me something, you'll likely hear back. Um, I don't take offense to any anything, any criticism, any any question I want it to address head on. So um, that's how you can firsthand get informed as far as um, getting hands on sticks. Exponential is next week. Uh, I'll be walking around with green drones, being the green drone guy, if you don't know me and being Randall from 
orange drones and gray drones and, and delivery drones and wherever else you know me from otherwise. Uh, we could go out in San Diego, find a place to fly. If someone wants to, to give it a go, I, I have nothing but time for that. Um, but because we're using the reseller network, you, you have someone in your backyard that likely has access to it that could, could do those uh, demos if necessary, give you experience, give you their testimonials once we get them out in their hands. So we, we, I figure yeah. by May 1st, there will be a comprehensive group of people that have seen these, flown these, and understand them. Um, yeah. Yeah. And resellers is what, drone nerds and who else? So drone nerds and Exertus Almo are the uh, are the master distributors. So I needed yeah. warehousing and logistics and what, all that stuff, and so they are housing the products to then send to to re the reseller network. Uh, you could buy directly from drone nerds because they are a traditional reseller as well. But it's really the the big guys. Uh, uh, no one has stock yet, so I don't want to be like, oh, here's exact like they have to actually buy things. But uh, Enterprise UAS. Uh, um, Adventure, uh, Adorama, yeah. Frontier Precision, Volatis Aerospace, RMUS, like the the guys that the are regular. leading the charge yeah. will will have access if they want access for sure. Um, so it's really just a matter of you know them getting their orders in, and, and I feel like if you someone listening is like I want one of these, go ask your guy that you get not guy guy or girl your team your people that you get these things from, and say have you heard about this? Most likely they'll say yeah. Can you get access to it? Most likely they'll say yeah. And let's uh, let's start there. The more there. You, if you have demand, we'll we'll uh, we will supply that demand. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm very happy that you were able to uh, to get on the Pixel Drone Show. We couldn't yeah. come up with a better reason to revive this show other than with uh, some awesome news uh, uh, that you brought us today. Um, I want to wish you good luck. I mean, I hope that uh, it's going to work. It seems like you have a great opportunity, so I have a lot of uh, faith in, in you being able to uh, turn this into a success. Um, if there's anything else you want to say, but otherwise, uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Randall. Yeah. All, all I'll say is pray for me because uh, today starts a roller coaster of a ride. And, you know, you asked about five years from now. I'm hoping in five years I'm at least hanging out with you guys, talking about drone tech, drone industry stuff, and, um, you know, trying to advance the way that we use it for the good. Uh, and maybe that's going to be uh, with with this blueprint. And I, I'm, I'm just fortunate to have the opportunity to take it forward. That's awesome, Randall. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think it's super exciting. So good luck. Good luck. Appreciate you guys.